There are a lot of factors that influence step parenting, but there are a few keys that if step parents get these right, things go a lot better. So let's talk about the six P's, I call them the six P's of step parenting. The first one is partner. Partner with the biological parent. They are your marital partner, but they're your parenting partner as well. It, fundamentally, this has to do with your marriage, right? Affirm your commitment to one another. Sometimes parenting divides the marriage in step families in a really significant way. You just need to come back to over and over again, hey, you and me forever, we're not gonna let this stuff beat us. We're a team, let's keep working together. Now the message here for biological parents is as you partner with the step parent is you've got to set them up for success. What I mean by that is, Number one, create an expectation in your kids that they're going to respect the step parent. They don't have to love. Nobody's demanding that they love the step parent, but they do have to respect that person, which means like they would respect a teacher at school or a camp counselor or a coach. That sets the step parent up for success. And the other thing you're going to do is pass power to the step parent. In other words, tell the children, hey, look, I expect you to listen to this person when I'm not here or when I am here. They're an extension of me, right? That's very important your kids understand that. And then when you back that up and you come alongside the step parent as it relates to the children, the message is even more clear then. This is all about partnering. Without this foundation, the other things simply won't go well at all. Another part of partnering is biological parents, you need to be the primary parent when it comes to discipline early in your family. This is a, this is a timing issue because early on you have a lot of strength and, and attachment with your kids and you have history and you know them and they trust you. The step parent is earning their way into the picture so they can keep the household rules and enforce, get things done around the house. But when it comes to make a new policy, you know, the biological parent is the one that they ultimately respect the most. Second P, is pursue. Step parents who pursue the kids will discover that eventually, more often than not, you can build a relationship there. Now here's the catch. You gotta pursue them at a pace that they can receive. So it's one thing to say, hey look, I, I just really appreciate you and I'm looking forward to getting to know you and wanna spend some time with you. Now, that's good, you're, you're articulating your desire for a relationship with the child. They need to hear that and they need to know that that's your heart. But just because you say that doesn't mean that they're going to reciprocate or give you the chance. They may be okay with you being in the room and like group activities, but if you said, hey, you and me, let's go spend six hours together one-on-one, -on -one, they may go, whoa, I don't know about how I feel about that. So it's a pace issue. And that brings us to the third P, right? Partner, pursue, and now pace. Read the child. What's their openness to you, their level of comfort with you? I think sometimes step parents perceive this as rejection. Okay, sometimes it is, but more often than not, it's really just a comfort level. They're still getting to know you. They're still trying to figure out where to put you in their heart. So there's space for you. It may not be as much space as you'd like, but there's space. So respect that. If you push too hard, then their walls come up, right? Then they begin to push back. Here's one good example of that regarding affection. I mean, you bear hugs and you're all about that. Well, if they bristle underneath that, that's a message. You know, just pull back a little bit, find what does work for them, and go with that. Maybe, oh, fist bump is as good as it gets. Eventually, you can get to big hugs. You know, here's another example about pacing. You know, Gary Chapman's Five Love Languages, amazing book, amazing concept. Find what really connects to the other person's heart and love them in a way that really hits the bullseye. Apply them in this order, right? Acts of service is the easiest for a stepchild to receive from you. One of the hardest ones that you're going to do last has to do with physical touch. So even if uh, your stepchild's primary love language is physical touch, I wouldn't start there. Acts of service. Do things for them. Gifts. Move into the gifts category, right? Giving things shows them your affection, your heart, your desire for them. Words of affirmation. Compliment them. Applaud them. Be their encourager, their number one fan, right? Then you can move into the more difficult and more depth love languages. Quality time, that has to be on the child's pace, and then physical touch. Now, some kids are open to this on day one. If they are, great, go for it. Other children let you know they are not open to that sort of stuff. So, you gotta pace and move through those gradually, one at a time. The fourth P is patience. Step parents have to learn to be patient. 
I think eagerness is the real culprit here. You know, a lot of what some people dub evil stepmothers are really just eager stepmothers who are just impatient, who just want a whole lot of relationship quickly and they push themselves too fast, too soon. They're kind of desperate for the child to accept them and love them and they just are working too hard at it. Back off a little bit. Be patient and understand that your eagerness doesn't necessarily mean that they are eager. You may have to dial back your attempts to pursue them. Again, that's a part of this pacing module. Really what we're saying is try to embrace what you have rather than being upset all the time with what you don't have. That allows you to enjoy what is. And again, you're not done. Your, your, your relationship's gonna continue to grow over time. It's just not today what you want it to be. That's great. Your heart, your desire's in the right place. But try to be okay with that because otherwise you get impatient. P number five is persistence. Now I'm talking about determination. I'm just talking about you are not gonna let the situation, this child, your family, whatever the dynamics are there, get in the way. You're just gonna continue to persist as a loving step parent as best you can. There's a lot of ambiguity in step parenting. You don't know where you're going, where you're coming, what your role is from one moment to the next. With your kids, it's clear. With your stepkids, it's not clear. This can get discouraging, it really can. So I'm just inviting you to be stubborn, stubbornly persistent. You don't have to force it, but just this constant, steady, presence. A lot of kids grow up and when they get some maturity under their belt and they look back at their step parent and they go, wow, you know what? They never gave up on me. P number six, prayer. The first five P's are tools for you as a step parent. But let's just acknowledge that you can't control a lot of things. And so those tools may be the right tools, but they don't always get you where you want to be. And so prayer is a thing that's just got to bathe this whole process in prayer. Both you and the biological parent together constantly be praying with one another, praying for God's wisdom and when to pursue and when to pull back a little bit and when to be patient and when to shift gears and let the bio parent take over. If you made mistakes, bathe that in prayer and, and, and pull back and start over and ask for forgiveness and work with the kids. Let God teach you. Let him train you over time. Trust him to make your paths straight and keep you humble so you can continue to learn and grow.